Well, Marks and Spencer began here in Leeds back in 1884 when our founder, Michael Marks, travelled over to Leeds from what was then known as Russian Poland and he ended up starting as a peddler here in Leeds. He was then able to take out a market stall in the outside area of the Kirkgate Market after he secured a loan from a man called Isaac Dewhurst who ran a big wholesaling company. Ten years later, that's when he decided to take on a partner. Tom Spencer was from Skipton. He actually worked for Isaac Dewhurst the man who'd given Michael that initial £5 loan. Um, Thomas Spencer was Isaac Dewhurst's chief cashier, so he, he had a very much administrative and financial background. Well, the Penny Bazaar, especially the very first one, was just one stall in amongst the others at Kirkgate Market. He started to realise after a little while that the goods that were selling the best were those that he'd priced at one penny. And this led him to bring in what became known as the penny price point. And he put big signs up above the market stalls saying, don't ask the price, it's a penny. And then by 1903, we had 36 outlets, 12 of them being penny bazaar shops and the rest all being market stalls still. And then as things developed, after the company went public in 1926, we moved away from the penny price point up to a maximum of five shillings. And this meant that we could start to expand the range of products that we were selling. And this included selling clothing for the first time towards the very end of the 1920s. Simon Marks, who was the chairman at the time, um, actually visited America in the 1920s and looked at lots of the different department stores and chain stores over there and came back with lots of ideas for expansion and for building what he called super stores. So these became what we would now recognise as a modern department store. We first started selling food in 1931. Well, that's when we introduced food departments into our stores. Um, and then by the 1950s, we'd introduced lots and lots of really high quality bakery items. Um, and it was starting to become acceptable to serve shop-bought cake at home, for example. Um, and M&S cake would have been sort of known as a, a really good one to buy at the time. Following on from that, in the 60s, M&S was the first major retailer to be able to sell fresh chicken in our stores. Before then, because of the food safety risks associated with chicken, it was really a case of um, buying frozen chicken or buying fresh from a butcher. We worked really closely with one of our suppliers at the time to develop what became known as the cold chain. Um, and this is the foundation of supermarket logistics um, today, really. Something that is easy to take for granted, but it's all about um, keeping things at really low and specific temperatures throughout the whole of the supply chain, um, which then means that there's a safe product shelf life at the end. It was a really, really massive step at the time. Well, there was a huge amount of cultural change in the 1960s. Um, and for the, us, that meant that we started to sell ranges that were particularly targeted at teenagers. Um, so that included lots of mini skirts and shift dresses, the types of thing that Twiggy would have been modelling. Um, she started modelling for M&S in 1966, just as she was starting to become a really, really well-known supermodel. The archive, which is held in our strong room here in Leeds, um, numbers about 71,000 items, and that's a huge range of records, whether that's business papers, um, advertising records, marketing papers, but then we've also got a large collection of garments, as well as things like food packaging. Um, there's all sorts, really, um, and it makes for a really diverse collection. But one of the really great things that the archive has been used for in the last few years, particularly, is for inspiration for new products. Um, so particularly in the last couple of years, there's been a range in collaboration with Alexa Chung, and um, that was called Archive by Alexa, and it actually used um, pieces from the archive collection that were reimagined, recreated, and various different ways um, that were on sale a couple of years ago. Um, and then this year as well, there's going to be Christmas gifting products that reuse imagery from some of our books and jigsaws from the 1920s. Um, so the archive is always being used to give sort of new inspiration um, to existing products and sometimes even create new products entirely.